Remember on Valentine's Day when Joe Biden came out and called upon Congress to enact common sense gun control? It's starting to happen. Sit by and watch this episode of Guns and Gadgets to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. First off, let me thank the USCCA for being a staunch supporter of this channel, as well as the Second Amendment here in America. If you're a new member of the community, a new firearms owner, or somebody who's been around for a while, some of us old salty vets, uh, the USCCA can benefit you with some great education and training. They have that fantastic reciprocity map, so you know where you're covered, because you know that your rights don't extend past dotted lines on maps, right? Uh, but the USCCA covers all that and more, plus you also get self-defense liability insurance, which is always a win. God forbid you have to defend yourself. So please check them out via the link down below. It's uscca.com slash gng. And let's get into this one. So Joe Biden called on Congress to enact common sense gun control because he knows there are only a couple things that he can do via executive order. And the rest of his promises throughout his campaign have to be done legislatively. So on Valentine's Day, he called upon his brethren, his gun control buddies in Congress, all the new uh, people who got voted in that promised to take care of firearms. And uh, there are procedural uh, changes going on in the House right now that, uh, that appears that they are preparing to do this. And they're the two bills that we've heard of before, and we'll go over them real quick. But I just want you to know that this information that I'm telling you was verified by Gun Owners of America. My buddies over there told me that uh, it appears that this is being done for this reason. And uh, the whispers are that H.R. 8 and H.R. 1112 or 1112 are going to be pushed through here. So these procedural changes uh, are often made when they want to just rush a bill through. And they often skip committees and go right to the floor. And uh, that would be something bad. So we need to be aware of this. So H.R the hell? So H.R. 8 uh, was called the Bipartisan Background Check Bill. And what it looked to do was to destroy gun shows, uh, to just delete them off the map, as well as the person-to-person uh, -person transfer, would criminalize those transfers. Anything that was transferred, a firearm, that, uh, via, uh, that wasn't through an FFL, that wasn't uh, with a 4473 and a accompanying NICS check would be illegal. So think of any guns that you might have sold to friend, family, whatever. That would be a violation of law making you a criminal because it didn't go through an FFL. Uh, yeah, how stupid is it? So if you're new to the community, if you're a new gun owner, you might this might sound good to you, but there's a reason that it's not. And we'll get to that big reason here after this little example. So here in Massachusetts, if you're a, a gun owner, if you have a, an LTC, a license to carry, your government permission slip, then you've already gone through the background check system. Okay, you've already gone through the federal background check and the police departments here in Massachusetts. It's not a shall issue state, so they can do their own little investigations too. And if you have your, uh, your LTC, you've gone through that check. So I can sell my gun to you and you can sell your gun to me or what, any other type of scenario to a, an LTC holder because you've already gone through the system. You don't have to go through the system every single time you want to uh, buy a firearm or sell a firearm. And the worst thing about HR8 that a lot of people miss is that it prepares and basically hand feeds a registry to the government. How does it do that? For the last couple of years, the ATF has been getting increased heat because they've been taking pictures of people's 4473s, thumbing through them, seeing what they bought. They bring it back to their field office, they download that information, and there's only one, one reason they not want that information is to document stuff, right? Uh, so that's a registry, that's illegal. And if you take into effect that they've changed the layout of the 4473, so all the information they want, the guns you have, are purchasing and your name, they're all on that first page. So now when they go through and take their pictures, it's even easier for them. What do they need that information for? Both of these bills were originally from January of 2019, and HR 8, unless you had, unless you, that transfer fell into one of the exemptions that they had in there, it was criminal. So if you gave your gun at a range to your stepson to shoot, that was an illegal transfer. If you gave it to your great-grandchild, that's an illegal transfer. You could be arrested for that and lose your Second Amendment rights. The other bill was H.R. 1112, and that was called the Enhanced Background Checks Act. And the Enhanced Background Check Act looked to do only one thing and one thing only. It was to destroy the current uh, NICS check setup. If you're new to the system, 
you might not be aware. You go buy a gun at an FFL, which is a federally, fi a federally licensed firearms dealer. So you go to a gun shop, you buy a gun, say you buy SIG 320. All right, and you got to fill out your 4473. That gets submitted for the NICS check, the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. And if you get a delay for whatever reason, the FBI has three business days to bring those results back to the, uh, to the FFL. And if the FFL does not get a do not proceed, then that transaction is allowed to take place and continue. Now they want to do away with that and they want to institute a 10 day window, business day window. So keep that in mind, these are business days. And if you don't get your results back within that 10 day window, then it's up to you, the prospective gun owner, to uh, petition the FBI for an additional 10 day window. Got to do that early because if they don't answer you, then you don't get it, I guess. Now, keep in mind that's 20 business days, right? 20 business days, that's four full weeks. Business days don't include weekends or holidays. So you're looking at getting really close to that 30 day, the 30 calendar day mark, which is how long a next check is good for 30 days. So if you don't get it completed within that 30 day window, then you have to initiate the sale all over again, a whole new 4473, a whole new submission, and you're open to those two 10 business day delays again. Now, both of these bills are backdoor gun control bills. They don't stop crime. Neither one of these will save a single life because, newsflash, prepare yourself. Criminals don't follow the law. That's kind of the definition of criminal. So the only people that are going to get affected are people who are doing it by the book, constitutionally, and they want to do the right thing. This only makes it harder for you and me to own guns. It only makes it harder for the next generation to own guns and the generation after that. Now, why should you be worried about these two bills? Because they both passed the House last time. And the only thing that stopped them was the Senate. And we know the makeup of the Senate is 50-50. So if, we, if they get enough Republicans to vote in favor of this, then we are staring at this passing and becoming law. Now, I went through and dug up my old videos about H.R. 8 and 1112 from back in uh, January and February 2019. And H.R. 8 passed the House 240 to 190. And eight Republicans voted for it. H.R. 1112 passed the House 228 to 198. Three Republicans voted for it. And three abstained from voting, which is the same as voting for it, because but they don't have the gonads to put their names on the list. So six Republicans helped that pass. And if they can flip the switch in, in the Senate and get enough to, to 10, is all they need. If they can get 10 people to say, yeah, this sounds good, then it's going to pass and become law. You know Joe's salivating. So guys and gals, be aware of this. Please pass this information along. It has to get out. Uh, YouTube is doing their thing again to this channel. Our numbers are as low as they've been since before August of 2020. So I need your help. Please thumbs up the video so more people see it, gets it into the algorithm. Make a comment down below to just get it into the algorithm. Share it with as many people as you can. And if you're not a member of this channel, please subscribe because this is where you're gonna find all the information about our constant fight to protect the, our right to keep and bear arms here on Guns and Gadgets. Day in and day out, you'll see that information here. And uh, this is rapidly ex uh, changing. GOA has their eyes on it. Uh, there are people watching what's going on in Washington right now. The House is changing their schedule in preparation of ramming something through. And this is what we think is going to happen. So stay tuned for any updates. I'll have them here. And until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry your weapon. See you on the next one. Could be really soon. Take care, everybody.